Hey guys, how's it going? Um, <clears throat> so I've been watching the YouTube and looking for uh, just different content. Um, I mean, I know shows are coming back, so I'll start doing the show reviews again, um, hopefully soon. Um, but just other stuff, um, I don't know, just kind of, you know how it goes. Um, but I saw one of the channels that I subscribed to, um, which I had forgotten about, because if you subscribe to a lot of YouTube channels, you forget about some of them sometimes. And I saw this guy, he was doing, he was going through and, and reviewing and ranking all of the Beatles albums. And I'm like, hey, that's a pretty neat idea. And I watched them and it was, it was good. And, you know, made me revisit the Beatles and whatever. Um, that's not where I'm going with this. Um, so I thought, hey, I could do something like that. Maybe, maybe. Um, but um, considering I've sold most of my CD collection, um, which again, I think I talked about in the very first series of videos I did like five years ago. Um, so I don't have those to review. So I'm like, well, let's start with something that I know a little bit better. Um, and really the only band that I've been in that I can say I have a discography for is Outlaw Saint. Um, they have released so far three, two full links and one EP. And I've pretty much been the only drummer on all of them. For the most part, um, with the exception of one song on the CD or on the EP, or a couple songs on the EP. Um, so, quick, quick backstory. Um, on my 40th birthday, um, back in 2014, um, I joined a band, saw an ad on Craigslist, and answered it, and had a conversation with the bass player. And while I'm going down there, it happened to be on my 40th birthday, which I thought was kind of cool. Um, and joined this band uh, that would be called Smudge. And um, that's going to fall. I know it's going to fall. That's okay. Um, called Smudged. And uh, anyway, joined that band. And we. Did stuff for about a year, give or take. There we go. That works. Um, did stuff for about a year, um, rehearsing and learning stuff. Hadn't played a show. Walked into practice one day, roughly a year later, and the guitar player was there, just me and the guitar player. And he says, you know, I'm going to wait for the other guys to come here, to come but uh, I have something to tell you all. And about five minutes later, he was like, okay, I'm just gonna tell you, um, I've joined another band. I was like, oh. And half jokingly, I said, well, are they looking for a drummer? And he says, as a matter of fact, they are. Because I think we were both kind of frustrated at that point that we'd been working and doing all this stuff and hadn't played a show yet. And that was kind of frustrating. So um, that night, um, that guitar player gave me a ride home, and that night we called um, Tank um, on the way home, set up an audition for me, I believe, because we it's much practice on Saturdays, a lot of practice on Wednesdays, so I did that following Wednesday, um, set up an audition, went down there, killed it, um, enjoyed the band, and about two weeks later, I was on stage, give or take. And maybe two weeks after that, we were in the studio recording the first album, which is this guy here. You can see that. Never saw it coming. So this is 2015. It was released. Um, And so this is four years after Outlaw Saints was formed. 
And so a lot of the songs I don't think we wrote. No, I take that back. Uh, there was one song that we actually kind of wrote for it. Um, and that's track 7 WTF. Um, other than that, all the songs have been in the in the uh, Los Angeles discography. Um, but yeah, we went down to, to Max's, a guy named Max Lewis, his, his studio in his basement um, in St. Paul. And Max is a cool guy. I really like Max. Um, he has a band now called SLEW, S-L-E-W, um, doing some very, very interesting things. Uh, so keep an eye out for them. Um, and he's just a good guy. I, I just like him. He's just a cool guy. Um, and I had never really, really recorded before. Um, we went down there and I think I got all my drums done first day. Like pretty much one, maybe two takes of everything and we were done. Um, the, the guitar and bass, I think we did vocals the next day. Um, and then maybe a week or two later we went back and listened to the mixes and, you know, suggested things, blah, blah, blah. Um, and then, you know, after that, a couple weeks after that, I mean, it was, it was probably, so we recorded, you know, April-ish. Um, I think the album was out by May, end of May maybe. I, I don't remember exactly for sure. Um, and I'm trying to think, where do we do, do the CD release party? I don't remember. I honestly don't remember, but I know we did one. Um, anyway, um, favorite tracks. Um, Evil One Track Mind. I've always liked Evil One Track Mind. I don't know why. It's just a fun song to play. Um, the two other songs that I really like, or three other songs really, um, No Way Out. I've always liked No Way Out. That was kind of a, a slower one, kind of a ballady one. But it built into this into this great crescendo, um, and actually lyrically, I could, especially in my second tenure in the band, I could really relate to the lyrics more, um, and that drove me to, to play it uh, differently. Um, and the other two that I really liked out this album, which we never really played after. After I left, well, we'll get into that later. Um, Cell Number Nine and Deception um, were the two other songs I really liked off this album. Um, so then that happens. We do a bunch of shows during the summer. Um, things are what they are. Uh, I wind up leaving at the end of November, I believe. Um, but earlier sometime during the summer ed and and uh dave and myself guitar player and bass player uh get together with this other singer named tommy and revise a band that ed had ed and tommy had years ago called garage orphans so essentially it was outlaw saint take out tank put in tommy that's garage orphans um, and we did a bunch of shows, and Orphans and, and Saint actually did a bunch of shows together. Not a bunch of shows, but a couple of shows together, um, which is fun. Um, and then, unfortunately, that ended when Ed uh, passed away that following spring. Um, and so that left me, you know, unassociated with anybody. Um, from that group at least. So then we jump to, let's see, when is this now? 2019 is when the second album is released. Um, so, I mean, I, I saw A La Saint in the interim, uh, a few times or to a few shows. Um, and then Tank, you know, was always asking if I'd want to come back and I was kind of him and hod. Um finally somehow convinced me to come back to help 
with the recording of the second album, which is going to be a rock opera um, loosely based on his life, on Tank's life. It's called Failure is Not an Option. Um, and so he, and there we are. So now we have a different bass player, different guitar player, ironically enough, also named Tommy. Um, so they bring me back uh, basically to help uh, finish with the recording of what would be the first single, I think, or what was meant to be the first single, um, which was a song called Rock and Roll Queen. So, got me back. We did Rock and Roll Queen, which I actually really liked. It was a, it was kind of a different sound for Al Lossi, and I, I dug that. And I liked Steve, um, and I liked Tommy, and we had Dan Osberg, um, uh, Chillwind Audio doing, uh, he was going to be, he's the, the producer, engineer, whatever you want to call it. He was doing the recording. Um, and I liked Dan, I'd never met Dan before, but got to know Dan and liked Dan. Um, and somehow it turned into, of course, me rejoining and then doing the whole album and blah, blah, blah. Um, and again, when we got down to actually recording the thing, because um, mo again, most of the songs were written, um, the, the, Starcraft Lovers was based on a, on a bass line that, um, Dave, D-Man, the old bass player, um, just kind of whipped out. Um, during practice one time and we just kind of built on it um, and that became a song um, The Way She Walks almost the same thing, it was just a riff that Ed was kind of messing around with and it just kind of developed into a song um, so those were the two kind of carryovers everything else is new um, actually not everything else is new because it was still you know, Race and Hell and She Gets Me High and No Way Out and all that um, but the one track we did write, which we never, even when we recorded it, we recorded it in pieces, um, because it was a little more complex than your normal All Last Night song. So the one time we played it live, which was at the CD release show, um, it was kind of shambles, um, but it was all right. Um, and I is uh, When Fate Lights a Fire. Um, interesting concept. Uh, I was kind of kind of impressed with Tank for, for coming up with something that was uh, this kind of, uh, you know, kind of a journey in a song, um, which I don't think he'd have really ever done before. Um, but, yeah, that was, that was, yeah. And then, I mean, th that whole process got kind of weird um, with Tommy and a lot of things were said, and I'm not going to go into it, but uh, we eventually let Tommy go and then had a, you know, just barrage of other guitar players um, coming in and still trying to do shows and write stuff and blah, blah, blah. And then we get to the last phase where we find our friend, Billy. Um, and gonna be honest, when he came in, um, I, I, cause he came in and the stuff he played was good. And I'm like, okay, cool. He might work and talking to him a little bit afterwards. Like, okay, he seems all right, seems cool. Um, but then we gave him some stuff, either we gave him some stuff to work on or he just kind of sent us some stuff, I don't remember, but it sounded very like country-ish, very like, uh, chicken picking, uh, type stuff. And I was like, okay, um, I don't know if that'll fit. And I was really kind of on the, on the fence a little bit. I got to say, really, I was, um, until it all came together 
and became cohesive in probably one of the better, if not best tracks, Outlaw Saint as a band in whatever configuration has ever recorded or has ever written. Uh, the recording I still have some issues with, um, but um, as far as writing songs, this is probably one of the better ones they've done. That's a song called Backseat Tricky. Um, off of this album, off of this EP. Um, where he does the chicken picking thing, but it works. And it is so cool. And it's just, it's perfect. It, it you know, uh, fits the song so well. Um, we do redo The Way She Walks. And Billy had ideas about that too, which just elevated that song. Because I've always liked that song. But it just elevated it to a whole another another level. Um, then we took W2F off the first album and basically just took the chorus of this version and turned it into a whole song, um, which worked because the first song had this weird, and I was responsible because I played the drums on it and I came up with the part, but this weird almost syncopated pseudo wrapped part not really but kind of um which never really worked uh so we just took the chorus and just built different levels of intensity and volume on the different on the verses and turned it into a punk song really um which is kind of fun so uh so that is that um so that's my discography um all of these albums i believe are, are are available these two well this one i know for sure is on spotify this one might still be on spotify um if you go to an outlaw sync show and talk to tank i don't know he might have some of these lying around i'm not sure um i know he has some of these lying around um so yeah go support and that's that's what i got and uh, we'll talk to you later.